Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. I'm here again at Piccadilly Station. It's the Easter weekend, so it's a turning point in the year. Now there are so many construction projects in progress around the centre of Manchester, on the periphery, it's difficult to keep up with it all. So I thought that I would ride around on my bike the, I think it's 12 major construction projects on the periphery of the city centre. Uh, that's for my uh, daily exercise ride on my Brompton bike. And the first one is actually here. So what's going on here? Let's take a closer look. Just down from the Leonardo Hotel on Adair Street, two concrete cores have shot up into the sky. Part of the base of the building is appearing too. Until recently, this area was not the sort of place you would wish to walk around at night. But now it's being transformed into a desirable city quarter. This is project number one of this video, a residential project named The Fairfax, comprising blocks of 29 and 23 storeys. The two towers are linked by a podium. Architects are John Matthews and Day Architectural. Here's the visualisation. Those are the two towers, and over to the left, the terminus for HS2, which was cancelled. Though I've read that the station may still be built. Now let's cycle down Travis Street, under the railway viaduct from Piccadilly Station, and onto Fairfield Street. There's Ian Curtis, tragic co-founder of Joy Division. The mural is now located on the wall of the Star and Garter pub. But what are those concrete cores close to Piccadilly Station and the old fire station? That's project number two on my list. They are seen here in this visualisation over the roof of the old fire station. Three blocks of 27, 21 and 16 storeys. It's another PBSA project, remember? Purpose Built Student Accommodation. It's on Echo Street, on the site of the old Chandos Hall of Residence. Architect Shepard Robson. Looking back as we freewheel down past the Sackville Street building, that's how it will look when completed. Another brown building to fit in with the existing brown buildings, but wouldn't it be nice to have some contrasting colours? Now we ride down Granby Row, past a favourite of mine, the 1930s Orient House, a residential building. That's the River Medlock on Princess Street, the A34, and now we are looking at our project number three, appropriately named Number Three Circle Square, a state-of-the-art 12-storey office development designed by Field and Clegg Bradley Studios. It's part of the Circle Square development on the former BBC site. That's Factory 251, but this is Manchester, we do things differently here, and there's the guy who said those words, Tony Wilson. We continue past the Lassagari pub, along Charles Street, across Oxford Road, onto Hume Street, and there it is, the Downing Co-Living Development, which needs no introduction. Just next to it is our project number four, a new development on plot 10 of the First Street District, combining offices and student accommodation. It's designed by John Matthews Architects, that's J-O-N. Project number five is the Downing Co-Living Development, called Square Gardens. These names, Circle Square, Deansgate Square, Square Gardens, it's confusing. Square Gardens, that's right, isn't it? Yes. Will be opening in September 2024. The website states you can rent an ensuite bedroom in a co-living cluster for £935 per month, including utilities, Wi-Fi and amenities. And hopefully you'll get on with your co-residents. At least you don't have a live-in landlord. Let's just compare the tower then and now. It's called Acer Tower, A-C-E-R. Demolition of the old Premier Inn proceeds, but straight ahead, there's yet another concrete core. This one right next to the Beetham Tower. What project is this? We'll find out soon. We head west along by the Mancunian Way to check out the Deansgate Square site and the construction of the tall cylindrical building is complete, on the outside at least. They originally wanted to call it the Cylinder, but then they chose 360. It's due for completion by autumn 2024, according to the website. Architects are Simpson Hall. There's that new concrete core again. We'll be heading that way soon. Seen across the Hume roundabout, another project is in progress. It's number seven on my list. We cycle past the former Urban Splash sales building, the one on stilts, and there it is, Vista River Gardens, our project number seven, part of Trinity Island. I've been tracking its progress. Here's the current state of the building. The tower is now reaching taller and taller. Here's the site as it looked this weekend. 
and how it looked in the past. The project is expected to complete in the fourth quarter of 2025 or the first quarter of 2026. We continue across the River Irwell and now we're on the Salford side looking across at these two matching buildings placed at right angles to each other next to the river. This is project number eight on the list. What are they? They are the Union Co-Living Towers, designed by Denton Corker Marshall. At the top, Union appears with a plus between the U and the N. Interesting. It's another project where you share living space with others, a bit like the TV comedy Rising Damp, but up in the sky. According to the website, a room in a co-living cluster at Union will be from £915 a month. That includes bills such as utilities, Wi-Fi, I'm not sure about council tax, check the conditions carefully. This is the 21st century River Airwell, now much cleaner than before, flowing between rows of tall buildings. We make our way up Liverpool Road, now passing Campfield Studios, under renovation, and now we're at Deansgate Castlefield, tram stop. We've reached project number nine, the mysterious concrete core which is sprouted upwards from a tiny footprint down below. You can almost reach out and touch the concrete, it's so close to the wall next to the Deansgate Castlefield Metrolink stop. It stands only a short distance away from the Beetham Hilton Tower. So what is it? Well, this is the new Stay City Apartments building in its early stages. It's controversial because it overshadows the Deansgate pub on Deansgate, which we can see in the visualisation on the left. The concrete core is squeezed in next to the former railway viaduct, but the main part of the building will cantilever out over it. Some people say this is overdevelopment. It will partially hide the Beetham Hilton Tower. Both of these buildings are by Simpson Hoare. Let's just flash back to the early stages of construction of the Beetham Hilton Tower 20 years ago. I tracked its construction in many photographs. And going back more than 40 years, that's my photograph of the abandoned Central Station in 1982, and again today. On this site will appear Viaduct 2, if it's approved, set to be Manchester's tallest tower. It's not an active construction site yet, it's being considered for planning permission. Now we're going to ride up Lower Mosley Street, past the Tower of Light and the Bridgewater Hall, site of the former Mosley Street bus station. On the left, the former Central Station, and ahead, the Midland Hotel. Past the green coloured office building named Windmill Green, completed 2019. Past the Central Library, and we are at Project Number 10. That's the former Bootle Street police station facade, and behind it, the St. Michael's development, spearheaded by footballer turned property developer Gary Neville. The boards say, love it, live it. That's how the smaller building looks right now, but the tall tower has yet to begin. It will stand where I'm standing now, on the site of the old Reform Synagogue. Now we're on Deansgate, nice bike lanes along here, and let's take a quick look up Brazeno Street towards the Town Hall, which is reappearing from under the scaffolding. Architect Alfred Waterhouse. On John Dalton Street, we find the 11th project on my list. It's called Island, I-S-L-A-N-D, and it's heading towards completion. On the boards, it says, Workspace for the future. Nine floors designed for happy humans. I like the brick exterior. The shape fits in well with the existing buildings. It's another net zero carbon building. I'd like to see the interior when it opens sometime later this year. Architects Cartwright Picard. We are seeing more and more buses in the Yellow Bee Network livery, but we'll stay on two wheels as we head now across the River Irwell via the Calatrava Bridge. We are on Chapel Street, Salford. It's Easter Sunday, so let's pause to admire Sacred Trinity Church, still a place of worship, and now we've arrived at the 12th project on my list, Collier's Yard development, consisting of three tall residential towers. That's the Cortland Tower in front of us. Let's just flash back to that old industrial building that I photographed 20 years ago. I think that the architects, Denton Corker Marshall, have tried to recreate its style. That's Abito, an apartment building dating from 2007, with its distinctive curved style. The tower under construction is called Bankside, it will contain 444 apartments and is expected to be completed in 2025. Next to Collier's Yard, another building is under construction. It was originally a project of the troubled Elliott Group. It stalled and was taken over and now it's nearing completion. The new name is Embankment Exchange. As for the delayed One Heritage Tower, Place Northwest reports that construction on the 542 home skyscraper could begin in Greengate during this year, 2024. There's the west side of Bankside Tower, seen from Trinity Way. Just a short distance away is the former Boddington's Brewery site. We have two separate projects going on here. 
This is the Phase 2 extension to the Manchester College. Behind it is our 13th project, one of the biggest and most ambitious in Manchester at the moment. It's Waterhouse Gardens, with a distinctive long building with tall windows and a zigzag roof. Place Northwest reports that a sale architecture was behind the original plans for the scheme, but those plans have been revised and modernised. How many concrete cores are there? Quite a few. It's on a split level site. There will be a flight of steps in the middle of it. From Dutton Street at the top end, we can see how big it is. There are views over Salford from here, and just nearby, there's an ornate Grade 2 residence opened in 1868, designed by architect Alfred Waterhouse. It belongs to His Majesty. It is HMP Manchester or Strangeways Prison. We ride down past the prison onto Lord Street and across Cheatham Hill Road onto Roger Street between two railway lines in a scruffy industrial area. But what's this rising up in front of us? This is Victoria Riverside, a luxury residential development, architects Hawkins Brown. While the residences are luxurious, the district still looks like a post-industrial backwater. Yes, it's going to be transformed, but how long will that take? Victoria Riverside is funded by Hong Kong-based Far East Consortium. This is just one of their projects around the world, and at this point my battery runs out. Quickly, we cycle up past Angel Meadow to Rochdale Road, and after a quick recharge, I can capture Swan House on the corner of Swan Street and Rochdale Road. Rising up from behind those New York-style facades, its exterior skin is broken by larger windows. This is another project by Simpson Hall. So, this is the 21st century Rochdale Road. A street lined with tall buildings. It's not far to go until Great Ancoat Street and the last project on the list, project number 17, One Port Street. Another tall development, the one that was reduced by one floor to get planning permission. Actually, I videoed it earlier in the day, when the sun was further east with no clouds. The project is moving ahead, and if you're wondering if anyone will ever come and live in it, I saw on the developer's website that the apartments are said to be 90% sold. This scene reminds me of a project from the past. Yes, it's the Beetham Hilton Tower. Same city, same architect, different time frame. The two buildings are about 20 years apart. So that's it. 17 projects that, for better or for worse, will change the face of Manchester forever. And that's the route I took. It was 16 kilometres, 10 miles long. It took quite a bit of research to find the details of these 17 projects. The information is often not easy to find. But I feel compelled to document what's going on and to provide that information. I have no connection with any architects or developers. I'm just the guy on the street, capturing what I see around me. Manchester is going through a remarkable period of development at the moment. It's unprecedented in recent years, and it needs to be documented. So, if you'd like to help me out, please support me via www.buymeacoffee.com. Aiden Eyewitness. For a limited time, I can send you a signed postcard with a personal message. During the making of this video, I drank many mugs of Thompson's Signature Brew, proudly produced in the great city of Belfast. I hope to do a video from there soon. So please like the video, subscribe, tell others, share your thoughts, respectfully please. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester.